Hey everybody, it's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, December 15, 2017, whatever. Let's see if we can get through this. I'm, uh, I'm going off of information that I used in a video that I made a few weeks ago. As I mentioned when I made this video, it was the only time in a long time I had not done first an audio check to make sure that the software was picking up the signal from my mic and thus the video was not even recorded. So if this is reaching you, it worked. If not, it doesn't matter. So we're going to talk about Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. We're not going to talk too much about Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2 although it seems to me thus far that there is a lot that we could talk about. Now in my last video I talked to you about the ongoing struggle I'm having with determining the exact meanings of the first directional word used in the Bible, which would be Kedem. That is uh, most commonly thought to be east, but yet it is used so often to mean more ancient or eternal things, and um, the book is not closed on that yet. But I have to get on to this. It has been taught to everyone that I know, if it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter, I don't think what sect of... Christian faith you were brought up in or where you currently reside, you have been taught this idea that Genesis chapter 1 is describing to us a six-day creation and that in Genesis chapter 2, what we're seeing is a, a going back and further detailing of of day number six and then forward the only problem with that is nearly everything structurally in what's being expressed in genesis chapter one and what's being expressed in genesis chapter two so I'm going to do my best to try to help you understand uh, what the issue is. So we got to go to, oh, we've got to start in 111, all right, no, eight, oh, one nine, and uh, it says, and, and I'm going to be reading again, this is uh, mostly King James with Hebrew words added in wherever um, whoever designed this particular software decided that they should go. Specific Hebrew words. Reading this at Q Bible, um, the Hebrew translation portion of Q Bible, is helpful for the person who is trying to first acquaint themselves uh, with the Hebrew. So Genesis 1 9. And. Alaim said, Let the waters under the heaven, Shamaim, be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And Alaim called the dry land earth, and the gathering together, the seas, um, and let, now, sorry about that, the waters he called seas, Alaim saw that it was good. And 111, and Alaim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Now thus far I've found that these translations aren't terrible, but at the same time, uh, they're not completely conveying, I believe, the description of what we see in the plant life and as you get into the wording used and the characters within that wording you'll see that 
some of these verses being translated into English um, may need to have been uh, quite a bit longer to fully capture uh, what's being communicated to us. So, continuing on, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding after its kind, the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind, and Alaim saw that it was Tob, good. And the evening and morning were the third day. 114, and Alaim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, Signs, season, days, and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament, heaven, give the earth it was so. And he made the stars also. He gave light upon the earth. The sun, uh, it doesn't say sun, I'm sorry. One light for the day, one light for the night. He saw that it was good. Evening, morning, fourth day. Now, day five. And remember, the only time we see a cardinal day is one. The rest are ordinal days. They are listed as ordinal days. A second day. A third day. A fourth day. You can make what you want of that. But eventually, we will figure out why terms like that are being used. So in 120, and Alaim said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And Alaim created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after its kind. And Alaim saw that it was good. Alaim blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the seas, let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now, just to clarify a few things before we move on, the translations of uh, these animal lives, uh, I think, are not good. Um, Uwi Amar Alaim, Aish Ratsu, E Maim, the waters, Sharats, Napash. Thus far, teeming souls. E yeah, um, exists. U, and we got O oop. E o upap. So, the whole thing about fowls, if you do a, uh, if you do a cross-reference search on this word 5775, oop, and then right after that, eopop, flying. Okay? Flying, flying. They are creatures. They are nepash, they're souls. Ea, existing. Eopop, flying. They're flyers flying. And, and there are some translations I've found that actually has that flyers flying. I'm trying to clarify that because when they say fowls, people instantly think of birds. Birds are not the only thing that can fly. We're just talking about things that have the ability to fly. They exist in a sense, over, as this says, over the, uh, the face of the Shamaim, which is what's typically translated as heaven or sky. Uh, Maim being the root waters. And then I haven't figured out the sh yet, that looks almost like a W, that is called Shin today, depending on where the dot is. Anyways, so let's not get caught up in, in the fouls, okay? But more than that, what we're going to see in 120, 121, 122, we're, we're seeing flying things and things teeming in the waters. And then we also uh, take just a minute to look at um, the uh, Thuninam, which 
A lot of them say whales. A lot of them say sea monsters. Yeah, I think that what we're talking about is the, the creatures in the sea which exist to this day, which are great, terrible creatures that he made, he describes later in the word, uh, specifically for the waters, one of them being uh, Leviathan. So that's what we've got going on here. And it's the fifth day. And then if we pick up in 124, and Elohim said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. Now this is earth, arets. This is all arets. We're seeing all arets. Now yes, we do see Adma one time in all this. And I'll, I'll show you, okay? Because we, we want to keep track of these things. They're important because they're not the same. If they were the same, they'd have the same characters. They'd be the same word. And they'd be said in the same context. So they're not the same. And in 124, Alim said, Let Aretz bring forth the living creature. And that would be Napash Hiya. Napash Hiya. If you see Napash He, He, Napash, Napash He, soul, live, soul, living, soul, life. All of these animals are described as Napashi, just like Adam. Not just the Adam, Adam is described as Napashi. Bring forth the living creature after its kind. Cattle, <laughs> which is Bema, I have no idea. And they, they can't stay consistent with cattle, by the way, as Bema. And creeping thing, you can prove this stuff for yourself, Ramash and beast of the earth after its kind, and it was so. And Alaim made the beast of the earth, Aretz, after its kind, and cattle, Bema, after their kind, and everything that creep, Ramash, Ramash, upon, our, now this is the one time you will see, Adma, Ramash, on the soil. See, the soil, <coughs> excuse me, the Adama is not Aretz. After his kind, and Alayim saw that it was Tob good. And Alayim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So we're going back to the word for teeming, because dog, which is used later, for, let's see, right here, Dagath, sorry, there's Dagath. So it's teeming, you got Dagah of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, over all the, da, 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 and Aretz. Now, th there's, stick with me here, there's a reason I'm actually going through all these things and telling you what these words are. All right, it's all going somewhere. The creeping thing, so it's ramash, ramash upon the earth. Oftentimes the verb form and the noun form are virtually the same with sometimes different prefixes or suffixes. See, you got something that's ramash, ramash, and then the Masoretes just came along and said, well, in this instance it should be pronounced ramash, and in that instance it should be pronounced ramesh because they said so. Now, so Elaim created man in his own image, and the image of Elaim created him male and female, created he them. And Elaim blessed them, and Elaim said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish, this dega of the sea, and over the oop of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So, man, it does say, Adam, that is the Hebrew word for man. Anyone who is a man can be called Adam. So he tells them to have dominion over all. Adam is the 
Napashi that was made to have the minion on the earth. And Elaim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which there is a fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth wherein there is life. I've given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And Elaim saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day now if you go to Genesis chapter 2 first it describes the rest of Elaim then about Genesis 2 4 we see first the name Eia away appear and it starts out and it says, now, <clears throat> these are the generations, the Fulade of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that Iyeuwe Alaim made the earth and the heavens. Now, here's where the English starts to confuse people. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for Ia away, Alaim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Stop. Ask questions. First off, herb of the field. We're going to start in Genesis 2 5, seeing this word. Shade. We have not seen Shade in Genesis 1. Now, Oshab, and we may see one other. We have so Oshab Shade, and this is what Esword is great for. So, we can we can take that and we can start cross-referencing these things. Genesis. Ah, geez. I just punched in that. Oshab. It's not in Genesis 1. It's here. It first appears in Genesis 2.5. And every Oshab Shade. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought he made all of that stuff in, in, in Genesis 1. Let me go back here because... Now I th I feel confused. Um, oh here we go. This has got to be it, right? Uh, jeez. So we're in um, right here before the the lights are made, right? We've got all of all of this stuff. So we've got ah, this is the Shah. I see. Hmm? Oshab got the Shah and Oshab. They uh, they translate it as grass and herb. The Shah and Oshab. Okay, and then we go back to 2 5. Hmm. Hmm. Shia. Hmm. Is that right? Shia? Let's try a cross reference again. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shia. And here it is again. We see it in 2115. When, uh, um, you know, what's her name? That had Ishmael. <laughs> Hagar, I think. I completely forgot her name. When, she, when she's with Ishmael, which Ishmael was actually a lot older than you think when they, they ran off. Anyways, so there it is. We've got a, a very different kind of plant here. It's not even mentioned in Genesis 1. It's here in Genesis 2. And it's modified. How's it modified? Shade. It's modified by Shade. Now, let's look at Shade real quick. 
Here we go, 7704, Shade. Quick search, Genesis. And I can't find it in one. I was really hoping, I was really hoping, because I don't want to reinvent the wheel here. I want to figure out what's being told to me. But here, I just, starts in 2-5. Plant, right? Shia, Shade. Plant of the field. Before it was in the earth, Aretz. And now we have, and every Oshab, Shade. It's modified. It's Oshab Shade. Why is it modified? We've got Shade a lot. Now, we, we can jump forward here in Esord to, we're in 219. Out of the ground, Yahweh God formed every, ooh, he. He. That is a very broad term you'll find if you start doing a cross reference on he. That's 2416. He. Of Shade. There it's modified again. We can't find anything modified like that in Genesis chapter 1. Now, some people might look and they might say, yeah, but I see coal. Coal has to mean all. Coal most certainly does not have to mean all. Because you go, it can mean all within a context. You go up to Joel. In the, the uh, part of Joel that Peter quotes from Joel 2, on the day of Pentecost, when it says, In that day, the Yahweh would pour out his spirit on all flesh. It's coal. Kol basar is flesh. Basar. Kol basar. Are we talking about chipmunks and oxen? I don't think we are. It has to be contextual. So before anybody says, but, 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 every step back and contextualize it. So again, we're seeing this modified, Shade. We have the he, Shade. All of the lives of Shade. And in 220, again, we have the he, Shade. This is important. This is important that we have this modifier, Shade, because what we do is we have this modifier, Shade, and then we, we see it again in, in, in 314. Anyways, this is all very important because that modifier is not in one, and it is in two. And for instance, when I said stop, full stop at Genesis 2, Five, because we need to think about that for a second. All of us have been taught that when we read in English, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for Yahweh Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now it is interesting that just before it, it says these are the generations of Shemaim and Aretz when they were created. In the day that Yehweh Elohim made the earth and the heavens, in the day, we need to seriously consider what this Yom means and contextualize it and have nothing but contempt and suspicion of everything the, the Masoretes have fed us. So, we've got this issue. There was not a man to till the ground. So, what portion of that are we supposed to be emphasizing? Are we supposed to be emphasizing there was not a man? What is... No, I'm not bored with my background. Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't know why they're doing that while I'm making a video. So are we supposed to emphasize that there was not a man? Or are we supposed to read the entire statement that there was not a man to till the ground? There were men 
but there was not a specific sort of man made to till the ground to bring forth the Shia Shade, the vegetation of the Shade. Now you can cross reference Shade, I recommend that you do. And I believe what you will find in general is that when you see Shade, it is going to be a term that modifies anything that it appears with to be of a character that is in a sense domestic if you can boil it down to one word domestic now you might find a few bumps in the road as you go but consider the translations the translators and what is being said around that word but the bulk, the weight of what you will find with Shade is going to be something that absolutely eludes, if not denotes, domestic. Domestic. Domestic vegetation. How about domestic lives? He. He Shade. Domestic. Different than all the lives and all the plants and wild animals and do I dare say wild men made in Genesis 1 now before you accuse me of everything from blasphemy to hate speech you better be able to prove conclusively your position because I'm just looking for what it is that this document is really saying. So, if Genesis chapter 2 is just a retelling of Genesis chapter 1, as we've been taught, what I'm confused about, more than the fact that, you know, the thing about Shia not showing up in Genesis 1 or the modifier Shade not showing up in Genesis 1 Yahweh Elohim not causing it to rain yet upon the earth why would that be mentionable if it was just day 6 why 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 would that be mentionable And just ask yourself that. What's the point? I really, if it's day six, I'm not sure I completely understand what the point of mentioning that there, there wasn't rain. There, ha it hadn't rained. It hadn't rained in five days. Well, let me see. It, 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 honestly, what well, what do we got? We got light on one. We've got the firmament on two. We've got the dry land appearing on three and the seas gathering into their places. We've got the heavenly lights on four. We've got the plant life all being made on five. And then essentially man and earth beast, earth life made on six. But yet for some good reason, the great God who wrote this through his servant, Moshe, Moses, decided it was very important to let us know that on day six it hadn't rained yet. Now, I'm, I'm a little excited because I just think it would be best to think these things through instead of just digesting all of the, uh, the dogma that we've been taught that the people who taught us were taught and so on and so forth and so on and so forth let's back up and let's think about it he hadn't caused it to rain yet by day six why does that matter if you've got a better explanation you can go ahead and put it in the comments I I don't censor comments now there wasn't 
a man to till the ground. Again, it's being modified. Not there wasn't a man. It doesn't say there wasn't a man. It's modified. There wasn't a man to till the ground. There wasn't a certain kind of man. I never said better. I never said worse. I said there wasn't a certain kind of man. That's what I said. There was a mist that went up from the earth and watered the whole face of Adma, the soil. So that all of that plant life from Genesis 1 could grow and could thrive. And it did. But none of that special plant life, Shia, none of that, none of that was growing. Why? It's Shia Shaday. There wasn't a man, a certain kind of man, to till, to work, to work the ground. The word is servant, to be a servant of the ground, to bring forth those things. A certain kind of man. Doesn't say there wasn't man. Now, starting in Genesis 2, 2 7, and Yahweh Allah informed eh, Adam, the man. What man? Oh, all men. Well, wait a minute. All men? Wait a minute. Eh, Adam? See, right here, there was not a Adam. There was not a Adam. For what? To till the ground. So when it says here, Iyahweh Alaim formed Adam, all men? No, maybe what he did was he formed Yitzar. It's not the bara we see in Genesis 1. Yitzar, he sculpted. He specially took the time to sculpt this certain man who would till the ground. Maybe that's why we have Adam in one and Adam in two. Because Adam means man. So he, Yitzar, sculpted the man. The man to till the ground. So, to till Adama. Adama, ground, not Eretz, the earth. Adama, special man. Specific man, okay? So he formed Adma of the dust, and it's a par of the Adma, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became, here it is, he, Napash. He became he. Napash, living soul. Interesting, it's Napash he in one, but I digress. Genesis 2 8, and Yahweh Allah implanted a gun. Here we go, Kadem, right? Oden. And there he put Adam, who he had, Yitzar, sculpted. And out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree. Now we have tree. Adma, out of the Adma. This is the same ground. This is soil. This is earth. This is what things grow from. This is the top part. This is the good stuff that good stuff grows from. And every tree, we have oats, that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, Hiya, also in the midst of the gun and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We won't get into the wording of those things. For now, let's just say that those things are okay in this context because we're not proving those things here. We're not proving anything. We're proving what it is that the text says. That's all I'm doing. And then we have the river, right? Nair. We don't know if that's a river. We know it's a waterway. It's some sort of water. It went out of Odin to water four heads. And then we go into the four heads, right? Now, 
after we get out of the four heads of the river. And, and those are all very important. Those contain vastly valuable information. They certainly do, but we're going to skip over that because that's not what our main focus is here. We're going to jump right up to 2.15 and continue there. So 2.15, and Yahweh Elaim took the man and put him into the gun, Oden, to dress and keep it because this Adam was made special for a specific purpose. And Yahweh Elaim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of Gan you can freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof you'll surely die. This commandment not to be found in Genesis chapter 1. Because there's a difference. Just because both the Adam of one and the Adam of two are told what they may eat does not make them the same. 218. And Yahweh Elohim said, It's not good for that man to be alone. I'll make him a help suitable for him. Now here's where I get confused again, because it's easy to confuse me. I'm not that smart. 219. Now, out of the Adama, not Aretz, out of of the Adma. This is the same stuff that this Adam was taken from. A Yahweh Alaim. He formed Yitzar. Every he Shade. There's that modifier. It's a specific kind of life. Call it domestic if you want, or if you don't want, then you come up with a better descriptive that properly translates Shade. And every Aup Shamaim. Remember, every, that's coal. Coal doesn't always mean all, all, all. Coal is in context. I will pour out my spirit on coal, basar, all flesh. So, are we talking about animals, birds, fish? Or when all flesh, does that mean man? Consider these things and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So, and he gave names to all the cattle. This is 220. It says cattle, but it's Bema. I'm not sure that Bema is cattle. But every fowl of the air, every <sighs> he, Shede. But for Adam, there was not found a help suitable for him. I'm so confused because in Genesis 1, I just read, I just read this. So you could understand after I show you, you can understand why I'm so confused. I'm not smart. Right here on the sixth day, it says, Alayim said, let the earth bring forth he, Nabash, after its kind, right? Behma, which they say is cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after its kind, and it was so. It happened right there. 124. It happened. 
And then 125, Elohim made the beast of the earth after its kind, cattle after its kind, everything that creeps upon the earth after their kind, and Elohim saw that it was good. It's a done deal. It just happened. 126, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Wait a second. I got man being made right here in chapter 2. And what is it? I'm sorry. Chapter 2-7. I get confused. I told you it's easy to confuse me. Not that smart. 2-7, he made man. But, but if I go forward... In 2.19, it says, out of the ground, a Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Are you guys seeing a problem? In one, all those, right? They were made, correct? Correct? And it was a done deal. And then he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. After it was a done deal. It happened. After he makes man. Genesis 2. What does he do? Well, first off, he makes man from the Adama. And then in 2.19, he makes these he, Shaddai, from the Adama. And he's making them after man so I guess it doesn't matter what kind of mental verbal textural tricks you want to do to try to make Genesis 2 a detailed retelling of day 6 in Genesis chapter 1 you have if you're gonna stick with that and that's gonna be your dogma you have a clear contradiction in chronology deal with it deal with it before you make any comments does anybody else out there find it to be interesting that Yahweh Elohim said it's not good for that Adam to be alone. I'll make him a help suitable for him. And out of Adma, Yahweh Elohim formed every he shade. And every op Shemaim. He brought him to Adam to see what he'd call him. And whatsoever Adam called every he should, uh, sorry, Hinapash. That's what the name was. And Adam gave names to all Bema, Aup, every he, Shaday. We're going to get into why it is this term he would be being used in the same sentence as be me in the future for a good reason but there was not found a help meet for him that's interesting if you don't find that interesting maybe someday you will that Yahweh Elohim would bring what Opossums, horses, I mean, you know, you, I have a hard time thinking that what he was doing was trying to match those things up with Adam. But that's another video. That's something different. 
And Yahweh Elohim, he caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. He slept. And it says he took one of his ribs, and there's a lot of controversy, cello, about that, closed up the flesh, and he made this woman. Okay, Adam says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And, uh, and then in chapter 3, he gives her a name. And there's something very interesting about that name that we have to talk about. But when you consider the modifiers being used in Genesis chapter 2 that are not used in Genesis chapter 1, when you consider the fact that in Genesis chapter 1, each day is given as an ordinal number, not a cardinal number, except the very first. And then when you consider, when you go into Genesis chapter 2, that it starts before this story of Adam in the Gan Oden, or <clears throat> Garden of Eden. These are the generations. These are generations of the heaven and earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh Elohim made the earth and the heavens. That's that whole story we've seen so far up to that point. And we don't know what kind of time has passed. Because Yom is very interesting. The idea, the concept, how it's used. Context is very key. The fact that our lexicography is dominated by these occultists called rabbis and Masoretes and so-called Jews. But I'll tell you this, with as ignorant as I find myself to be, and with as much as I find myself to not know as I learn, and with as little time as I have to put into this, I'm not seeing the same story in Genesis 2 as in Genesis 1. You have something different, unique, and specific. You have a specific, special man that was created in 2 to do a specific thing. Put in a specific place with a special purpose special role and here's the deal Yahweh Elohim the creator of it all has the prerogative to do as he will as he sees good now to not argue with anyone concerning the veracity of the Hebrew Scriptures. What I'm doing here is trying to understand what they say before we can have a good constructive argument about the historicity and the veracity of the Hebrew Scriptures. We first have to clear away all of the garbage that has been handed down to us through the Masoretes. Unfortunately, through Greek translations, and most, most, most unfortunately, through things like Nessel Alland United Bible Society that simply mixes so much um, existing manuscript evidence all together in this calico-y, hodgepodge, mix, 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 mix stuff. No single source stuff. There are actually a number of single source manuscripts, but what I'm trying to tell you is we've got man messing around with these documents uh, ad nauseum. We have to first determine what the documents say 
before we can have a good constructive argument on their historicity and the person responsible for them, or people, if that's what you believe. And I will tell you this. If I found good evidence with my feeble mind that is so utterly imperfect, that showed me that this was all a sham. For any of you who understand the extraordinary tribal ethnocentric nature of those people that call themselves Jews, and you have equated the Hebrew scriptures with them, the first thing you have to do is stop that because they have done nothing but malign the reputation of the Hebrew Scriptures and the God thereof with their behavior and by even having the gall, the nerve, to call themselves the house of Judah. And they ain't got any proof. Just like their fiat language, just like their Masoretic pukey Nikud, they don't have any proof that they have any relationship to the house of Judah or the house of Israel. Don't confuse the two. If a horse calls itself an apple, you're likely to not believe it. And that's all I got for today. So, chew on that. I'm very passionate about these things, so I definitely am not meaning to be aggressive towards anyone in particular, except for liars that don't have the truth in them, because I want this stuff figured out. I want to know these things. We have to know these scriptures, which no matter what your current opinion is of them, they do happen to be some of the provably, provably, just objectively provable, some of the oldest documents that we have still preserved. So it behooves us to understand what they're actually saying. So I got to go to work. I've got to go to work and uh, work for foreigners who came to this country and took advantages of uh, all of the systems and education and, uh, you know, economy that was uh, built and attained here um, just to disrespect the very people that did it bummer. That's all right. Hey, if you think I'm wrong, pray for me. If you think I'm right, pray for me. I don't ask anything of any people that listen to any of this that are out there on their own journey. I ask nothing but that you would consider that what I'm doing is from the most sincere heart and mind and that you pray for me and if you agree with what I have to say or you hate what I have to say comment please try to be as coherent as possible comments full of cursing all caps 20 exclamation points they're they're just hard to comprehend as all so keep that in mind Till next time, I hope you people all take care of yourself. Bye-bye.